Don't know where to start, it can be overwhelming, even paralyzing. So let's fix that. Welcome to Simply Cyber, a community of tens of thousands of aspiring and active cybersecurity professionals focused on networking, knowledge sharing, and professional development. I'm Dr. Gerald Dozier, Chief Content Creator at Simply Cyber, inviting you to get the answers to your cybersecurity problems with hundreds of cybersecurity videos answering your frequently asked questions, interviewing industry experts, and live streaming daily cyber threat briefings hosted by me. Now get the stories and insights you won't find anywhere else. Hit subscribe now and dig into all the fresh content on the channel and in the community. Nothing should stop you from launching and leveling up your cybersecurity career today. All right, everybody, welcome to the party, pal. Today is Tuesday, December 12, 2023. Welcome to episode number 513 of Simply Cyber's Daily Cyber Threat Brief. And I am your host, Dr. Gerald Dozier. And over the next 45 minutes, we're going to be ripping the lid off the top cybersecurity news stories of the day alongside Kenya Nizo, Matt McDaniel, Marcus Kyler, and Adam V. The Yeet crew, haircut, fish, Dan Reardon with all his try hack me's advent of calendar info, uh, advent of cyber, Adam Frank, my man, cybersec, JS, and Sharon Moore's in the house, Valentino on the reg. What's up, everybody? Let's go. Over the next 45 minutes, we're going to be shredding the top cybersecurity news stories of the day, and I'll be giving my expert opinion and analysis on each of those stories on what it means to you tactically or strategically so you can implement cyber risk reduction for your business stakeholders like a boss. Or if you're looking to break into the industry, spoiler alert, we are going to deliver unbelievable value for you, those seeking to break in and transition in industry because A, you're going to have to know what's going on, threat actor names, terminology, concepts, dive into the deep end, my friend. We'll throw some swimmies on you at minimum. But believe me, get in the deep end. Let this wash over you. It's going to be epic. On top of that, you will be asked in any single job interview, believe that. How do you stay current in the industry? This right here, all of this, this is the answer. On top of it, look at Tom Bishop. Look at Matthew Hibbert. Look at Lazaro Rivera, Johnny Five, Ion Q, Priyadarshini Rao, all of them. The Simply Cyber community is helping, supporting, including sharing resources. Say what's up in chat first. Uh, people looking to break in. Hell, even if you're in the industry, you got to stay on top of things or else it'll pass you by. So that's what's up. You're going to get massive value. I do not prepare research or you know get prepped in any way for this show, which might sound ridiculous. But believe me, when we're getting into the stories, You'll see what's up. I'm giving my honest, raw reaction on what you need to know about. Now, because this is part of my full-time job, which is absolutely epic, thank you all for enabling me to do this. I do got to uh, shower some love and let you guys know about my stream's sponsors, the ones who enable me to not pay gate or paywall or do anything for this stream except push it out to the masses, starting with my good friend, Panopsi Security. Get a partner who understands your cyber program and your business goals. Listen, budget, resources, what's hot right now? What's hot? That Hansel's so hot right now. Listen, it's hard. It's hard to manage all that. So instead of hiring an FTE, which, spoiler alert, you're probably not going to get approved for in the first place, hire professional services. Panopsi Security, they come in three weeks, four weeks, whatever. What's your biggest challenge? You need tabletop exercises. You need a business continuity plan. You need just a freaking risk assessment to figure out where you should even start. But upside security, they're going to get you all sorted out. And on top of that, they're wonderful people over there too. So consider Panopsi security for your small business in-house professional service needs because they are epic and I love them. At a minimum, have a conversation with them. Also, shout out and love to Anti-Siphon Training. You guys know Anti-Siphon Training. Uh, the training segment of Black Hills Information Security. Deb and Jason driving the bus. Velda Lemke, the, 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 the steward over the entire uh, train. Get professional training from cyber industry experts for $0 or less. 
That's right. Go to the link in the description below. Go to training. Go to pay what you can training and check out all of the calendar events of upcoming training um, that basically you can take for zero dollars. Don't let financial uh, burden impede your ability to get quality education and break into the industry. Anti-siphon training. Love myself some anti-siphon training. All right. And we got Barricade, obviously, but more about them at the mid-roll. Guys, it is Tuesday, which means Tuesday tidbits. I will be sharing a personal little tidbit about me at the mid-roll. See if it resonates. See if it jibes with you. We've got Zach doing the Simply Cyber Community Challenge at the mid-roll and passing the baton. Hopefully, he's here. We got a great show for you. Want to remind you, every episode of the Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing is one half a CPE. So listen up, pay attention, grab those CPEs. Take a screenshot of your name and chat. That's why the chat's on the screen. Um, file it away and get the CPEs. If you're live with us right now, like Justin Gold is, say hashtag team live in chat. Do love the hashtag team live. If you're on replay, hashtag team replay. Uh, got much love for the team replay. And finally, if you are watching this for the first time, if today is your first episode, you just stumbled in here, you're backing in, someone told you, doesn't matter how you got here, my friend, you are more than welcome. And if you're feeling a little uh, savvy, a little froggy, you want to get involved, say hashtag first timer in chat, hashtag first timer in chat. We love knowing who is here for the first time, simply so we can welcome you with open arms. We've got a special sound effect for you, first timer. We got a special emote for you, first timer. So say what's up in chat, first timer, and we will welcome you to the party, pal. Now do me a favor, sit back, relax, and let's let the cool sounds of the hot news wash over us in an awesome wave. I will see all you beautiful people at the mid-roll. From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. These are the Cybersecurity Headlines for Tuesday, December 12th, 2023. I'm Rich Straffolino. U.S. tries to avoid internet fragmentation. On Wednesday this week, the White House national security and economic teams will meet with tech companies, labor activists, and digital economy experts. These meetings will seek to cohere a U.S. government policy over how to deal with the increase in global data flows across a variety of industries. Senior officials told Bloomberg that this won't see the U.S. back away from advocating for a free and open Internet, but may see the administration make policy adjustments to account for national security and privacy concerns around AI specifically. This comes after the U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tay withdrew a decades-old U.S. trade position in October that supported unrestricted data flows across national borders. All right. Hey, Leon Elliott. Super pumped to have you here for five months. Um, Okay, so this one I'm a little confused about. Um, Data policy, fragmented global internet. Um, again, I don't research or prep for these stories. So what I have to imagine is, first of all, straight cash, homie. this is all about straight cash, homie. The internet, guys, like really quickly, the internet is a network of networks. All right. That's all it is. If you, if you look at uh, a trace packet, um, you know, from here to like Australia or whatever, it goes up the chain to like major data com backbone tell providers and then goes down after it goes across the water. Okay. So you know, the network in the United States, right? There's like a bunch of networks, but then it hooks into inter international networks and the data flows. And it's always been like, you know, a commons service, right? Like, like the internet, it's nobody owns the internet, right? There are, you know, quote unquote, quasi geo fencing, but at the end of the day, it's a hot mess express with public private sector ownership. Um, you know, like AT&T, Verizon own a lot of the backbones, international, who owns what. Um, and then, you know, you get situations like China where they put up the great firewall and everything routes through there. Same in North Korea, like, you know, data is super censored and super restricted and you can control the choke points because there's only like one way coming in and one way coming out. Right. And I'm being hyperbolic for in purposes, but um, it's always been like one free internet. Now, the United States is debating data policy. There is a boatload of data flowing around everywhere. And the way networking protocols work, they look for the most efficient path. They don't always take the same path. And I think what they're getting at here is, 
well, geez, there's so much digital service. There's so much data flowing everywhere. We really need to control it and make sure that we are basically, we be in the United States, are uh, controlling it in a way that we can make sure we have visibility over it. Again, if I had to guess, straight cash, homie. Uh, it could have something to do with taxes and making money. Again, they say national security in this instance. But if you ask me, okay, if you ask me, this isn't really about national security. Like all the national security things have already been like sorted out. The internet's been around since like, like really the 60s. And like the military was already like boots, you know, like had stepped into the overalls pulled up the trousers and had the suspenders, no shirt on yet. Oh, you minx, uh, US military. But that's the 60s. Things were crazy then. Then we got into like the Studio 54 70s time. And, you know, the, the US military, they had the suspenders, no shirt, but then they threw on like, you know, like a, a, a big flared collared shirt. Why am I being all silly with this outfit? My point is the United States military has been all up in the internet's business for 60 years. Okay. So like, don't come at me, bro, with like national security on the internet. Like that's such a, I mean, there's probably some security, but I feel like this is more spin than anything. At the end of the day, this is all straight about cash, straight cash, homie. Product is moving more into digital services, right? We're, we're doing less of like physical, tangible, exportable services, things that can be taxed, tariffs, all this stuff. Um, Way to go, U.S. I don't want to fragment an internet. It would be ridiculous, honestly. How stupid would it be and how silly would it be if, like, all of a sudden, like, this this YouTube channel, right? Like, I'm only allowed to broadcast to, like, United States citizens, and I have to pay some type of, like, international, like, like uh, fee in order to get into Europe? I don't know. It just seems weird. Again, this is not a cybersecurity story. But it is one of, you know, geopolitical digital citizenship concern. To me, this is such a weird, big, nebulous topic that I'm not super worried about it. But let's go. EU reaches agreement on AI Act. It's the end of the year, and the EU wants to get some high-profile tech legislation off its plate, I guess. We saw last week it reached an agreement on the Cyber Resilience Act. Now the EU Council, Commission, and European Parliament reached an agreement on a draft of the AI Act. This places controls around so-called foundational models requiring transparency and detailed summaries on training data. AI practices deemed high risk will hold strict reporting and evaluation requirements, while AI tasks with unacceptable risk will be outright banned. This includes things like social scoring systems and automated vulnerability exploitation. The draft exempts open source models from restrictions and provides additional carve-outs for law enforcement and military use cases. It also allows for fines of up to 7% of global turnover for violations. All right, so AI coming at you hot, baby. Uh, Cat GPT. Shall we play a game? All right, so the EU has uh, regulations on AI uh, amid three-day negotiations. Okay, here's another thing I heard in the story. Guys, if you're not paying attention, straight cash, homie. Straight cash, homie. AI, we will tax the F out of you. Um, no big deal, private sector. There's a carve-out for national security and military. So basically, like, the the government can continue to do AI in any fashion they want, but private sector... Oh, no, boy. We are going to put guardrails on you. Let's be real, dude. The private sector is the ones that are driving the innovation. The government's not driving the innovation. So, yeah, let's put some guardrails on you unless it's going to serve national security and then, you know, get in here. You're in the special circle. Um, again, I hate to be cynical, but this is how I am with this stuff. Uh, I do. I do appreciate I was flipping out in March. Here we are in December, nine months later. I was flipping out in March, April timeframe that we needed to get moving on regulations. I'll give, you know what? I'm going to give the uh, European Union at least the nod. They are getting regulation. They are prioritizing getting in front of AI and putting their arms around it a little bit. The United States is doing bickering amongst itself and they've put together like a commission or a panel or something. Haven't seen them do anything. Um, the priority, like, again, this isn't a political show, but the priorities are not, you know, at the federal level seem to not be prioritizing AI and AI regulation, getting their arms around AI. But um, the EU's doing it. Maybe we'll just copy and paste 
um, here in the United States, unlikely because Europe's way more forward on uh, citizen rights and privacy and stuff like that. But um, they are defining use cases that are unacceptable risks. So some committee, some group is going to define what unacceptable risks are for AI and ban the usage of it. Um, what I will say is, um, unfortunately, unfortunately, um, banned uses of AI are probably going to result in underground uses of AI, right? So like if I tell you, <laughs> you can't use your AI to do X, whatever X is, and you want to do it, there, like there's nothing stopping you from like building your own LLMs and, and doing it underground, right? Now, if it's banned, what is the penalty? Like, is it, as far as I know, they didn't set legislation around like illegal. They say it's banned, but like, so what? Like, is there a financial penalty? Is there jail time? And financial penalties, guess what? Dude, if my ban behavior, you don't catch it until I've made $60 million and your ban behavior penalty is 500,000 or even 7%. I'll give you 7% of my $60 million. Get out of my way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like 7%? That's the cost of doing business. Like ransomware threat actors are going to charge me 7%. Great cash, homie. Right? Whoa. Hold on. Bryson got a SOC analyst job and said the channel helped during the interview process. I came in like a rain. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Alana. Congratulations, Bryson. I'm not sure if Bryson's in chat right now, but seriously, this is what's up. And I absolutely love it. The, dude, like we're here working every day doing the work and this is what it's at. But for me, the celebrations, the wins, there's a lot of things we celebrate here because we are, um, <laughs> we're all about good times, but someone getting the job, someone breaking in, hell yeah, that's where it's at. North Korea finds continued success with Log4 Shell. Researchers at Cisco Talos announced that North Korea's Lazarus Group continues to use Log4 Shell vulnerabilities as part of its threat campaigns. This was used across Lazarus's portfolio for hacking operations, used to deploy malware and dual-use tools. It was also used in a recently unearthed campaign by Lazarus called Operation Blacksmith. This shows the sophistication of Lazarus's operation using three new malware families written in Dlang and a pair of remote access trojans to target enterprises between March and September 2023. This campaign also showed overlap with recent North Korean attacks against JetBrains Team City server software disclosed back in September. All right. Um, let me see. I mean, Log4J, like just give me a second. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, I've never heard of Dlang uh, programming language. I don't. I don't even know why they would use it. Frankly, it's not like. Um, th th I guess they're using Dlang because it helps obscure um, the malware. I mean, malware isn't looking. I guess malware might be looking for sort. I mean, not malware. Um, like Defender Technologies looking for certain file extensions. I don't know if Dlang's an interpreted language or a compiled language, which basically means like 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 Python and JavaScript are interpreted, um, like um, C plus plus and Java are compiled, right? Like the output you you can look at interpreted code, you know, like a browser. I mean, a, a Notepad. You can't look at compiled code. You have to disassemble it with something like uh, Ida or Ghidra, or Cyber, or Binary Ninja. Um, anyways, the TLDR here, North Korea, I had no idea Log4j um, was still being actively exploited. Log4j, if you guys don't know, Log4j um, it was a deeply down the supply chain vulnerability that was discovered in like December of, tw like December 17th, 2021. I kind of remember it. it was like right around the holidays. Um, so like, you know, happy anniversary, Log4j. You're two years in the wild. Um, and North Korea is still hacking it. Again, I didn't really... People were losing their minds when Log4j dropped. I made a video or two on the channel for Log4j showing how to exploit it and how to detect if you had it. Um, Huntress made a really quick and easy tool. It was super easy. Um, but a lot of people didn't know if they had it. And honestly, I never really heard... And I don't know if you did in chat, but I never really heard of many material hacks like hacks of like you know that mattered 
um, using log for shell as the exploitation point. So I never, I thought it was more um, sizzle, less steak. If you if you're picking up what I'm putting down, right? Um, but North Korea is hacking it. Here's the deal. Log for shell, it's very easy to find, right? There's very easy ways to detect if a system is uh, vulnerable to it. So what I would say is North Korea's hacking ops, um, it's crimes of opportunity, right? They're not like targeting like the US Department of Navy and they're like, ooh, we're gonna get some log for shell exploitation here. No, it's like, where the hell, sorry, Kennedy. Where, it, where the heck is the um, log for shell vulnerabilities? And once we exploit, then let's figure out what's there. That's like one thing, like North Korea Lazarus Group is really good at stealing digital money, like way, way better than anyone else. Like that's their MO. If if a large sum of digital money disappears, Lazarus Group is the first one that gets rounded up by law enforcement, right? Okay. Now, what I also want to say is North Korea, their level of like conviction and vigilance is pretty impressive. Like they'll literally try to hack all the log four shells they can find and figure out you guys are wonderful with your swear jar. So funny. Um, like North Korea will just hack anything and everything that they can and then figure out what they got. And they just rinse and repeat. They're like a machine. Um, so again, I don't, I know it sounds like I always like endorse the, uh, the threat actors, but all I'm doing is a hat tip to their level of professional execution. Okay. Ideas are easy. Execution's hard. When you see a group executing consistently, that's it, dude. They must be, you know, like the shines definitely wore off, dude. Like when you're like just grinding, 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 um, and you get a log for shell and then you find out it's like, you know, somebody's bake sale website. You're like, Oh my God, next. So way to go. TLDR. If you're running log for shell in your environment, you absolutely should know about it. Right. It's easy to check if you're if you have log for shell in your environment. Very easy, okay? You should be checking that if you have log for shell in your environment. Secondly, and this is important, you should be checking with some recurring frequency, not just for log for shell, but all things. And why? I checked it in in June, Jerry. Like, why the heck should I check it in December? Because people like Carl, and Carl is just an avatar for an end user in your environment, whether it's somebody who's like a regular general end user, not technical, all the way up to like domain admin, super IT person who's been there 30 years. People will stand up new things. Your technology footprint, your infrastructure. What the hell? Holy crap. That just scared the crap out of me. Whoo! Oh my God. I just had like an adrenaline dump. I was about to turn around and fight my TV. Holy Jesus. Look at the goosebumps on me. Wow. All right. I'll have to go back and look at what that looked like. Um, your, your technology infrastructure can change. That's it. Period. End of story. So you need to be recurringly checking for things, not just check it once and say it's good to go. Same thing with end users. People get fired. People get hired. Everything is very fluid. Your attack surface, surface is fluid. You have to treat it like so. Apple breaks beeper. Last week, the multi-platform messaging app Beeper made news by offering Beeper Mini, an Android app that interoperates with Apple's iMessage without the need for relay servers. Other apps offering iMessage services on Android effectively use Mac hardware to route messages, and that opens the door to a lot of potential privacy issues. By September 8th, users reported that this feature on Beeper had stopped working. In a statement, Apple took credit for this, saying, We took steps to protect our users by blocking techniques that exploit fake credentials in order to gain access to iMessage. As of this recording, Beeper Mini reintroduced the feature, although it now requires logging in with an Apple ID rather than linking a phone number to use it. Beeper also made the app free, given what one could assume will be continued instability. All right, so again, I mean... Let's try to derive um, a cybersecurity story out of here. Apple, one of Apple's, um, one of Apple's main things around um, its 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 business model and its product model, right, is vendor lock in, right? I love my iPhone. I use iPhone all the time. I used to be a Mac user, but Macs cannot run. 
simply cyber. Okay. Like I hit a performance threshold, everything that you're seeing right now, it would, my, my old Mac. And I had like one of the, the, the beefier ones would choke on simply cyber. Okay. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it, but it frustrates me because it's easy. I can't like I had it. I was filming a video yesterday. I had to take some pictures and then I had to like email them to myself. I couldn't just airdrop them. So it, there is frustration, but that's what Apple wants. Apple wants it to be full of friction and painful not to be in the Apple ecosystem. And iMessage is super convenient. And with all due respect, I know there's some Android users in here, but like I'm on a group chat with 10 people, nine are Apple users and one is an Android user. And we always ride that dude about his green bubble and we just make fun of him, okay? So like there is something weird, stigma-ish around the green bubble and the blue bubble. And a company, you know, it's a huge pain point, right? So people are willing to pay, people are willing to look for a solution to have Android get in iMessage, right? Very seamless. Beeper did it. Now, obviously they wanted to be very verbose about it in order to get market share and get people to do it. It sounds like Apple used a cease and desist or whatever. I would not go up against Apple's lawyers ever, but it sounds like just to tie this to a cybersecurity topic, it sounds like you have to give your Apple creds to Beeper. This isn't good. You should never, ever be giving your credentials um, to a third party, right? Like, like here's the deal. Like, when you log into a website and it's like, would you like to use your Google credentials, right? Like, like Canva or LinkedIn, right? Two sites people know. With Canva and LinkedIn, when you go to create a new account, instead of creating a new account, you can just use your Google account. Now, you're not giving Canva or LinkedIn your Google credentials. That would be outrageous. What you are doing is leveraging what's called federated authentication in order to keep your creds and you authenticate to Google servers. Google comes back and says, thumbs up, LinkedIn, Canva. This is Jerry. Jerry's good to go. Here's a session token to prove it. Use this thing around. And obviously, LinkedIn and Canva have to be configured to accept that credential. But it's a huge win for everybody because your end users only have to remember one username and password. LinkedIn and uh, Canva don't have, or whoever is using leverage uh, um, identity, um, it doesn't have to like deal with like tech support or resetting credentials and stuff like that. When someone quits, you can disable their one account and it breaks everything across cloud. Um, it's it's awesome. Federated authentication is one of the few times that it's a win for security and a win for um the business users, of course, if that credential gets compromised, you're you just shot yourself in the leg like Plaxico Burris, where like they get access to everything. But Apple is saying that if you give those creds to Beeper, you're basically uh, revealing your uh, iCloud stuff. So that's that's the risk. And Apple stepped in and straight up uh, crushed it. Okay. So um, so that's what's up. No no hey no shame no shade. I'll I'll text with a green bubble. I'm I'm green bubble friendly. I'm pro green bubble. I'm pro blue bubble. It's just busting chops. That's all. Mono Julian, bro. Here we go. Did we just become best friends? Yep. There's a multiverse where Gerald is the threat actor, teaching folks how to not get caught and escalate the C2 while giving praise to the good guys for stopping their efforts. You know what, Mono? Facts. Thanks to the super chat, Mono. Uh, all right. So way to go, Apple. Again, we're kind of light on the cyber stories today. All right. Hey, I'm just pulling this in because of BSEC. Uh, he's given some context on this. Uh, it was a 16-year-old, way to go 16-year-olds, who discovered the Beeper workaround. Uh, Beeper hired him. And right now, Apple found a way to lock them out. But what they did to do get around it is now they are porting it through fake Apple serials. So it looks like an Apple device. Okay. So interesting. Again, it is awesome. Uh, as far as a business model goes, it is very cool, but it has to be friction free. Like there's so here's my other thought on this one, right? There's so many messaging apps nowadays, right? Like Signal, Telegram, um, WhatsApp, if you're into that. Um, there's just like Snapchat, Snapface, Face Space. Like there's a million me messenger, there's a million messaging apps. So like Apple iMessage. It's not the only game in town. So like their market share, their footprint, their dominance is less, right? So 
if it's not, if this solution isn't super slick and super free of friction, people are going to be like, ah, I'm not going to install like some stupid, weird jailbreak patch thing on my machine. So anyways, and then by the way, if this does work, I guarantee you this, if this does work and they are able to get past um, the lawyers and everything, right? Like, just hear me out. This is a fact. And this is something that's going to, I'm going to project here, but this is uh, scalable to other things. If this works, just imagine magic button, genie in the lamp, you rub it and you say, I want my wish to be that we can use beeper for iMessaging. And Apple can't stop us. Your wish is granted, okay? The next thing you need to know is immediately threat actors are going to start coming out with uh, malicious Trojanized apps that claim to do this. And then they're going to get all your creds and then they're going to steal all your stuff. That's what's up. Also, here's a bonus tip. The more you know, emote, please, people. If you are taking a phone picture screenshot of your emergency backup codes for your sensitive applications. And you know what I'm talking about. It'll be like, Hey, if you ever need to uh, get into your account and you forget your phone or lose your phone or you lose your multi-factor, here's a special code. That's like 15 words that like lemon, uh, buttercup, skateboard, moonshot, right? Like, like if you're taking a photo of that, which a lot of people do, and you're saving it to your iCloud, maybe automatically and you don't even know it. If a criminal or threat actor gets in your iCloud, one of the first things they're going to do is sort by file type, look for PNGs, and do you know how quickly they can scan and tell? It's, it's obvious when you've taken a screenshot of that emergency backup code, which bypasses all your authentication, multi-factor creds, everything, okay? It's very easy to find that. Just saying... There's a there's a bonus uh, tip for you guys. The more you know. All right, let's keep going. Now a word from our sponsor, Barricade Cyber Solutions. Encountering a ransomware attack? Keep cool and reach out to Barricade Cyber Solutions, the trusted DFIR experts. Barricade is known for helping small and medium businesses just like yours restore their business data and successfully recover from ransomware. Escape the ransomware nightmare. Bring your business back online now. Contact Barricade Cyber Solutions today at recoverfromransomware.com. That's recoverfromransomware.com. All right, guys, we got the mid-roll. Shout out to Barricade Cyber Solutions for their mid-roll beautiful graphic and CISO series integration. Well done, y'all. But it is the mid-roll. Hey, did we get any first timers here? If this is your first episode, hashtag first timer. I didn't see any in chat, but that's okay. It is the mid-roll, so now we're going to phase my voice out or something. Spoiler alert, the mods, especially the audio ones, like Jesse, b Second Base Case, this is like uh, such a pet peeve of them. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to the party. Hey, I'm going to try to do it a different way, okay? Oh, wait, that's not working. All right, hey, guys. Shout out uh, all of you. Uh, hope we are having a great stream. Hope you're having a good time. If you're getting value from the stream, please. Oh, add NE as a first timer. Welcome to the party, pal, NE. Great to see you. Apost Apostolius Kutovas. Uh, hashtag first timer. Brian Woodward. For Hold on. We got so many first timers. It's out of control. Thank you all. Hey, Nick. Hey, Brian. Welcome to the Hey, at NE, let's get you uh, first timers in here. Welcome to the party, pal. John McLean, welcoming you properly. Welcome to the party, pal. All right, guys. All right, let's get our audio issues straightened out here. All right, hey, guys, if you're getting value from the stream, hit the like button on YouTube, guys. There's 428 of you beautiful people here today. It takes two seconds to hit the like button. The reason you would do it is not for me, not for you. It's for the next person who's going to find Simply Cyber. So if you're getting value from this stream, please pay it forward and help somebody else find the stream. Hit the like button. Thanks to the stream sponsors for enabling me to bring this to you every single day. Barricade Cyber, Panopsi, Anti-Siphon Training. They're all about good times and I love it, I love it, I love it. Guys, Simply Cyber Community Challenge is up in here. Zach Fosdeek dropped his story 
um, on LinkedIn yesterday. Here's the deal. If you would like to supercharge your LinkedIn feed, if you want to capture the value of professional networking and you're not sure how to do it, please allow me to help you. Please. For five minutes a day for two weeks. Do you have five minutes for two weeks? If you don't, you might need to find 10 minutes, okay? Five minutes to increase value dramatically for yourself. Go on LinkedIn. Oh, hold on. Uh, Leon Elliott with a um, Leon Elliott with five gifted subs. Leon, thank you. All right, Leon Elliott with the five gifted subs. Barricade Cyber with fifty gifted subs. Thank you so much, Barricade Cyber with a hundred gifted subs. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. If you're a newly minted Simply Cyber Squad member. Go ahead and take advantage of the emo tray. Thank you so very much, Leon Elliott and Eric Taylor. Get your Oprahs here. You get a squad membership. You get a squad membership. Amazing. You're so amazing, all of you. All right, so the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. This is all you have to do. Hit the like, um, hit the like button. Go on LinkedIn and search for this hashtag. Go on LinkedIn, search for this hashtag. Connect with the people posting with this hashtag, Zach Fosdy messaged yesterday. He's gonna tag somebody with the baton today. Connect with them, comment on their post. I'm gonna show you really quickly how easy it is, okay? LinkedIn, hashtag, I'm searching in the corner. Simply Cyber Community Challenge, easy. Past 24 hours, easy. Look, where is it? Sort by latest, okay? Look at this. Zach Fosdeek, right here. This is it. This is Zach's post. All you have to do is connect with Zach. Look, I'm a first level connection with Zach. Then go to comments. I've already commented on his post. You can see it right there, right? I'm already connected with all the people on the comments. Oh, not Rob Dodson. Rob, I, I sent you a, 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 a connection invite earlier today. You can connect with me. Guys, it's as simple as that. Let me get you started. I'm literally going to copy and paste a link to this post. Start it today. That's the link. Just go. And here's the deal. When you comment on the post and connect with the comments, the next person who connects and comments and connects with people in comments is going to connect with you. You'll actively build it with five minutes a day. You'll passively build it with the 23 hours and 55 other minutes of the day. Don't sleep on this. Believe me, it's super valuable. All right, hey, guess what? It's Tuesday, everybody. Tidbits Tuesday where I share a little bit about myself and maybe we resonate. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Here's the deal, guys. It is the holiday season. I do celebrate Christmas and every holiday season has certain um you know, recurring traditions. For me, growing up, we always watched A Christmas Story. This was my dad's absolute favorite movie. We had it on VHS tape. We watch it every year. We, we, we basically ran the tape out. The Bumpus is Hounds, The Red Rider, Black Bart, um, Santa, You'll Shoot Your Eye Out, on Emma's, uh, you know, Rabbit uh, Pajamas. Hilarious, hilarious movie. Um, it probably doesn't hold up super well over time that the, the uh, Chinese restaurant at the end is probably not socially acceptable anymore, I would imagine. But this movie, uh, I love it. We're starting new traditions with my own family and my children. Uh, but this one's always in there. Also, as a, um, a backup option, Home Alone with uh, Matt Macaulay Culkin and, you know, ah, that's turned into a family tradition. So let me know. Uh, in chat, what your favorite Christmas movie is if you watch Christmas movies, but um, that's what's up with me. Blackberry cancels. Yeah, hey, Zach Cho, we'll talk about the it at Jaw Jack. And John Giamatteo as its new CEO. He previously served as president of Blackberry's cybersecurity business. With the move, it's unsurprising to hear the company will no longer proceed with its previous plans to spin out its Internet of Things and cybersecurity units. This comes as part of another reorganization by the company. It says it's in the final stages of selecting a consulting firm to assist in these efforts. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So, um, okay, so BlackBerry, if you don't know, everybody knows, well, you might be 
too young, but BlackBerry back in the day was like a main competitor for cell phones, right? The business people loved it because as much as we're used to like cell phones with just screens now, and we love ourselves some touch screens. BlackBerry had a full QWERTY keyboard and business users could like uh, text wicked fast and write emails wicked fast. Um, and then basically that went the, the way of the dodo and BlackBerry kind of started to tank. So unlike Blockbuster, uh, which completely imploded when Netflix destroyed it. Hey, fun facts, uh, fun facts. Blockbuster had a chance to buy Netflix for $67 million at one point and said, this business model will never work. And now uh, Blockbuster doesn't exist. And Netflix is uh, the premier giant in the entertainment space. Okay, so BlackBerry, instead of like just dying a quiet death, uh, got into the cybersecurity place. They acquired Silence, which is a EDR solution, I'm pretty sure. And now they are um, they, their CEO was trying to spin off an Internet of Things business. It looks like the CEO got fired probably for that decision to invest time, money, energy, and resources to go that direction. Don't uh, lose sleep over the CEO who got fired. I'm sure his parachute was made of pure gold and he'll land just fine or she will land just fine. Um, so... I mean, I don't know what to tell you about this story. Again, like, what? All right. Hey, really quickly. I don't pick these stories. Oh, hold on. Subra with the Super Chat, 400. Um, I don't know what unit of currency that is, Subro, but definitely appreciate the Super Chat. Thank you. Did we just become best friends? Yep. With shaky hands, I want the uh, SM fam to be the first to know that I have successfully transitioned to cybersecurity after a year of work. I will start my new role as a cyber project manager next month. Super pumped. I came in like a rose. Yes, sir. We just become best friends. I yep. came in like a rose. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. In a day where the Cisco series stories are not really that great and not really cyber focused, getting an update like this from Subro is an absolute delight. The whole reason we went live today, Subro, I'm going to backfill it and say, that update, along with Bryson's update. Guys, I'm telling you what, we have put so much time, energy, effort into Simply Cyber, the mods, the community, like all of you, myself, my family, my wife, guys, just grinding, working, providing. And you know what? When you plant crops, when you plant flower seeds, when you water them and toil over the uh, process, you've got to be con uh, committed and, and, and vigilant. But guess what? Crops don't pop up overnight. It takes time, energy, effort, and you have to nurture it. And I am happy to say I'm loving the frequency of these updates. I feel like the work we're doing here and all the work you all are putting into your own career journeys are bearing fruit. This is freaking awesome. Nice, Subro. I came in like a All right. Love it, love it, love it. All right, final thing I'll say on this uh, story here is this isn't really a cybersecurity story. Like BlackBerry got a new CEO and they canceled something. Woo, okay. Alf V site goes down. If you've been following our ransomware coverage, you know that Alf V or Black Cat, whatever you want to call it, remains one of the most pernicious operators in the space. So it's not surprising that it's being targeted by law enforcement. Now, the threat intelligence firm RedSense reported that the leak site for the group is down and that Alf B members and other ransomware groups believe this comes from a law enforcement action. Publicly, Alf V maintains the site is down due to an unspecified hosting issue, saying everything will work soon. Because this outage impacts the group's ransomware affiliate customers, security researchers believe it could result in an exodus of customers to other ransomware as a service operators. All right. So a couple of things. One, Chris Young with the Super Chat. Thanks, Chris. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Love it, love it, love it. Also, that squad membership looks good on you. Um, okay, so check it out. Uh, okay. <laughs> we covered this story yesterday as a uh, Simply Cyber uh, community story insertion because it was so important. Um, now, the site was down. There's a couple of things here. First of all, I, law enforcement probably wasn't involved, but let's do the sounder anyways. All right, so here's the deal. Alfie Black Cat, tier one ransomware threat actor, ransomware as a service, affiliate model. Their website is, the, you know, it's like any other um, 
cloud-based tech company. Again, guys, I love to think about criminal enterprises as just businesses, okay? This right here, Alfie Black Cat, it's their business. If their website is down, guess what, guys? If Amazon's website is down, they're not making money, right? It's, it's, it's a problem. If Netflix is down, you can't stream shows. You're still a member of Netflix, but how long are you going to deal with their every you know two months increasing the price by a dollar if the website is down, if you can't consume their product? But guess what? And again, I, I hate to even say this, but like Hulu, Disney Plus, Peer, P, Paramount Plus, P, P, uh, Peacock, these other like whatever second tier services, people will leave Netflix because you know it, it's already expensive and you're not getting service anymore and go over there. So Alfie Black Cat has IT infrastructure issues and they're concerned that their customer base is going to move away. All right, now let's talk about it for real. Did law enforcement take him down as uh, promoted by Eric Taylor of Barricade Cyber Solutions, who has uh, insight, not insider knowledge on this particular story, but he's lived in the trenches. He knows how these things work. Guys, Black Cat, Alfie, their website is probably hosted on some, you know, bulletproof thing in Eastern Europe. IT systems go down, physical servers, physical um, internet uh, buildings, right? Like, like the, the call, the data center, it could be in a war zone, right? IT staff could have made a misconfiguration. Like at the end of the day, yes. Ooh, they're spooky, but this isn't a Hollywood movie where their entire data center is in some freaking cave with a waterfall hiding the entrance and they've got blue and red lights blinking everywhere. And they're like, Oh, I'm rerouting through Friendster. No, they have a freaking data center. If you look at any of these law enforcement takedowns, there's always like some data center that law enforcement gets into or figures out. And then they that's how they like take over the website and then administer it secretly as law enforcement. It's in a data center. It's not in some super criminal legion of doom, you know, area, right? Okay, so IT infrastructure down. The fact that there wasn't a splash page for law enforcement is even more of an indicator that it was just, um, you know, IT operations issues. Um, and then finally, I'll say from whatever, like Black Cat Alfie, they are a tier one player. They probably have a lot of affiliates who are very happy with their services and the payouts and everything. The only other group out there that's really doing something strong is Lockbit. So maybe you'd lose some market share, but guys, what? Criminals, they're all about. Great cash, homie. So if Black Cat Alfie gets back up in the next couple of days, it's not going to slow anything down. All right. That's all I'll say about that. Um, remind me, Chris Young, you're always awesome at this. Uh, if you can remind me about criminal IT infrastructure and the way it's presented in Hollywood and what my thoughts are on that, please. Uh, and let's keep going. Kelvin security leader arrested. Spanish police arrested one of the alleged leaders of this hacking group. Operating since 2013, researchers attributed over 300 cyber attacks across 90 organizations to Kelvin Security since 2020, hitting victims across the U.S., Japan, Chile, Italy, Spain, Germany, and Argentina. Spanish authorities arrested the alleged leader, a Venezuelan national, on December 7th. He's tied to money laundering efforts from crypto obtained from selling stolen data. Authorities hope investigation of this threat actor will lead to the discovery of more operators in the group. Spanish police began investigating Calvin back in 2021. All right. It was a All right, so I have never heard of Kelvin Security. Like I've never heard of this group, but they've been operating for 10 years. Um they have a couple of high profile attacks. Um, they leverage vulnerabilities in public facing systems, right? So technical exploitation using probably Shodan to find it. Um, they would get valid user creds and then steal data from breach systems. Um, there you go. So they were targeting critical infrastructure and government institutions likely because, um, they thought it would be useful for uh, leveraging. They weren't just targeting the United States, which is pretty popular. looks like they were targeting, uh, you know, Spanish speaking, but also Italy, Germany, Sp Japan. Like this is really a uh, criminal enterprise of opportunity. Way to go, law enforcement, Spanish police. Uh, you guys straight crushed it. Um, just as a, a joke, um, I don't really mean this, but it's funny. 
maybe Kelvin Security should have used that anime um, avatar instead of this eagle looking thing. Maybe they could have had a higher success rate. I'm joking. Um, there is a very specific anime avatar that, uh, you know, threat actors use. Uh, but anyways, you know what? I'll take it. This isn't, you know, Lockbit getting taken down, but it is a criminal threat actor. Um, they've been in the in the wild for 10 years, so uh, let's bring them in. And, and let's, uh, let's yeet them into jail. Europol warns of criminal Bluetooth tracker use. According to a new blog post by Europol, criminals increasingly use commodity Bluetooth trackers to geolocate illicit goods, notably cocaine. Law enforcement increasingly finds these trackers alongside narcotic shipments, often hiding in sea chests. Just like you might use it to track your luggage, criminals use them to monitor drug shipments once it gets on the road, where there are enough paired devices to continually ping locations. Europol said the cost, size, and battery life makes them ideally suited to drug traffickers. All right, air tags are so hot. That Hansel's so hot right now. Air tags are so hot right now. Guys, okay. Uh, I got two hot takes on this story. First of all, let me let me uh, take full advantage of my Will Ferrell so hot emote. Uh, and if you're a new community member uh, or a new squad member because of uh, Leon Elliott or Barricade Cyber, giddy up in the squad uh, emote tray. So here's two things. Here's two things. They say Bluetooth tracker, but it's basically air tags. Uh, and for geolocation, it's basically so they can track it. All right. Two things, two things here. One, this is obvious. You're you're shipping product and you want visibility over it. So you throw an air tag on it. This is literally what air tags were for. For tracking your sensitive things, things that you find valuable, important, you stick a homing beacon on it. This is like um, you know, Mission Impossible movie 101. You slap it on a car, you slap it on a mill crate, you slap it on whatever, right? That's it. Mods, can I get the uh, Flex Seal Slap It uh, animated GIF, please? All right. So here's the deal. This this should come as no surprise to anybody, right? Threat actors want to track their goods. And they want a single, like to go back to 2019 and use the buzzword du jour. Threat actors want a single pane of glass in order to manage their distribution channels, right? Cocaine, uh, drugs illegal semiconductors like people frankly right human trafficking it doesn't matter they want to know where their goods are this is their product this is how they make money right thank you uh justin so you know what they do they they slap it on there throw they throw an air tag on it now here's what i will say the best part about this in my opinion the absolute best part in my opinion is that threat actors cannot control who is able to ping the air tag. Okay, so do you know who can also ping the air tag? Regulators. Law enforcement. Dude, I watch enough of these uh show there's some show on Discovery Channel or something. It's like always on in my house of like people who are trying to like smuggle drugs through you know, like international airports like Colombia, Australia, Venezuela. Sometimes they're smuggling like birds or food or something, but usually it's drugs. And like law enforcement, the whole show is about law enforcement, like cracking down on these people. Dude, if I was law enforcement in a hot minute, all they're going to do is scan for freaking air tags. And if they see one, go to where the air tag is and look at what it is. Like threat actors are pro like, with all due respect, threat actors are probably going to stop doing this soon because you're literally calling it attention to law enforcement to come check it out. I'm right here. I'm a huge bundle of blow. Come get me. Like, that's what's up. Not a good business practice. I get it in the short site where you can have a single pane of glass, but dude, boots on the ground, they're going to straight up just take it. Yeah, to catch a smuggler. Thank you. Security spending on AI grew 51%. All right, that's enough of that. All right, hey, we are at 856. <laughs> Guys, if you're getting value from the show, holla, holla, holla. Thanks so much, guys. Stick around. We've got a great uh, after show party for you called Jaw Jacking. Love it, love it, love it. If you do watch To Catch a Smuggler, thumbs up. You know what I'm talking about. Um, I feel like it's not a, a, a tier A show, but if you know what it is, it, it they're consistent. They consistently deliver on it. Uh, really quickly, I want to share an update with everybody. 
Um, the quarterly State of Simply Cyber community meeting is scheduled for tomorrow, but programming update. I haven't been promoting this because I'm going to reschedule it. I'm not rescheduling it because there's a problem. I'm not rescheduling it because I'm like revaluating. Like, what do I need to report to you guys? Everything is ready for this to happen. But tomorrow, I am going to be taking the day off completely. And I'm going to uh, chaperone my son's field trip. I'm super excited about it. I've been working my, like, you may or may not know, I've been working my, my butt off, like entirely working my butt off on multiple initiatives, including the Cyber 101 course. And I was supposed to take December off, some of you are aware, and I've been working like <laughs> like 10 hour days. And it's not fair uh, to my family and I feel um, torn about it. So when this opportunity came up and I was asked by my son to chaperone, um, I cleared the entire deck and uh, am super pumped about it. So I've rescheduled this meeting uh, it will happen. I will communicate when. I've got tons of really great things to um, share with you. I've even got, I'm going to tease it. I've even got a new uh, Simply Cyber logo and shirt, not logo, but like shirt with a new graphic that's super hot. It's so hot. That Hansel's so hot right now. I bought I bought one for me and one for Mrs. Osier. We looked at them. They arrived yesterday. They're phenomenal. Kimberly McKnight, Kimberly Can Fix It, helped me with it. It is hot and it ties perfectly in with something that I'm going to be announcing at the quarterly meeting that I want everybody to know about. So it's very hot. Uh, it's super cool. I'm super excited. I think you're going to love it. Um, so anyways, that's what's up with that. So I'll, I'll communicate out effectively. Uh, to that point, we will have a guest host tomorrow. I'm not even doing the Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing tomorrow. We will have a guest host who has agreed to step in in my absence so I can be completely focused on family tomorrow. Um, so please give him or her uh, uh, your respect. I'm sure they're going to be delivering a phenomenal show tomorrow. I can't wait uh, to hear how it went. Uh, but that's that, guys. If you had a great time today, thank you so very much. Hit the like button on your way out again to help other people find the show. And we'll see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern time. If you got time and you want to hang out, um, let's go to jaw jacking. If you want to hang out, let's do some jaw jacking. Otherwise, have a great day. Continue to crush it. Congratulations again to Bryson and Subro for breaking in. Super pumped. If you got certs exams coming up, if you got interviews coming up, good on you. Crush it, you guys. This community is amazing. Each one of you brings value to the greater community. I thank you. I thank you each for being here and showing up every day, contributing, being supportive, inclusive. It's wonderful. It's amazing. It's inspiring. I'm Jerry, your chat. Until next time, stay secure. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. My name is Jerry Guy, uh, the artist also known as Dr. Gerald Osher. I hope you had a great daily cyber threat briefing. Now we've moved into jawjacking. If you're new to what jawjacking is, it's basically just a chill AMA, hang out for 30 minutes, community talk, sharing you know wins, um, sharing resources, hanging out, high five, and everybody. Uh, I always do check my calendar because I'm insane and I, I my schedule is ridiculous and I always forget sometimes. Uh, so I actually have a, sh a meeting at 930, which means let's go. All right. How is everybody? Um, Zach? Oh, thank you. Zach Fosdy. Did you pass the baton? Let me know if you pass the baton. Oh my God. Can I share? Can I share something exciting with you guys? Okay. Like uh, calm, everybody be calm, be cool, be cool. But I want to share something wicked amazing with you. You're not going to believe it. Um, where is it? 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 Hold on. Let me know. Hey, did you guys already all share your favorite um, Christmas movies or holiday movies? I know some of you might in here be like the um, the Hallmark Channel marathon people. I know that's always fun. Oh, my God. Where is it? Oh, here it is. 
Okay, nobody gets super excited. Nobody get ridiculously excited, but I do want to share this with you. I geeked out. Um, I geeked out um, when this happened, okay? So a couple days ago, a couple days ago, I shared a... Uh, <laughs> I, I did a connection request with um, Jen Easterly. And uh, I... Okay, I just... I, ah, I'm just saying, listen... Listen, she it, it was probably one of her um one of her support people who did this and she probably accept, accepts everybody's invite. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay? Just saying. Just saying. All right. Hey, so that's what's up. Let, let me get this Jen. All right. Let's keep going. Oh my god. So, hey, like, here's a fun thing. I don't know if anyone, uh, I have to like, I'm trying to get a life insurance policy. Uh, not trying, I'm getting one, but it's like very, it's very time consuming. You have to like fill out all this paperwork and. Oh, it's Zach Dick. Zach Dick or Fosdick, Fosdick. Sorry, Zach. Um, we actually, Z sorry, Zach, we literally did like a phonetic I investigation to see how to say your last name correctly. Oh my God. Okay. 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 Hold on. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Okay. Lazaro with the super chat. First of all, did we just become best friends? Yep. Okay. So if you don't know, if you're new here, if you're a first timer really quickly to catch you up, we're always celebrating community members wins, but Lazaro and chat, um, let us know weeks ago that he was having an interview, then a second interview. We got him hyped up. We shared resources to be good. Here's another update from Lazaro. I've been e eagerly awaiting this. When one adventure ends and new one begins, I signed my offer letter and can officially say as of yesterday, I'm a cybersecurity analyst serving, serving on the DIFFER team. Thank you again, Dr. Roger Red Community. I came in like a Yes, 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 yes. Like yes. yes, my man. Oh my God, so good. Way to go, Lazaro. Absolutely crushed it. So pumped for you. Oh my God. Uh, and Lazaro, you know, hey, you know what? Congratulations. And I got to tell you, um, you know, get excited. But the work, the work begins now. So, so like, let me just share this with you really quickly. If you're interested, uh, Lazaro, and I, I'm not to not to ignore the rest of the community, but this is pretty huge. And I want Lazaro to crush it uh, immediately. So Lazaro, um, I, I, obviously I have how to crush your first 90 days on the channel. But if you didn't know Lazaro, this meeting right here, this interview I did with uh, Jessica Hyde. Jessica Hyde is, she might be, It's it, people could argue this. Jessica Hyde might be one of the most skilled digital forensics incident response professionals in our industry today. She is amazing, okay? Like she is, like, like if you got a problem, you call her. If you're a federal government, and you need differ, you call her. You're a Fortune 50, you need help, you call her. And in this meeting, um, she she dropped so many resources on how to be awesome at differ, uh, Lazaro. So definitely take advantage of that. Dude, crush it. I'm super pumped for you. So awesome. Way to go, way to go, way to go. Oh my God, so good. So good. Oh, so good. I feel like I should just end the stream now. Like that, that end on a high note, man. Jessica Hyde is a Marine. She is a Marine. She's amazing. So giddy up on that. All right. Thanks, um, Jenny Housley. Be good. Chelsea Ray Waterhouse has accepted the baton. Chelsea Ray Waterhouse, please do the Simply Cyber Community Challenge on LinkedIn. All of you go look for, um, go look for, Chelsea Ray Waterhouse's post. And thank you to Jenny Housley for mod support and driving the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. An amazing professional, Jenny Housley. Oh, Chris Young reminding me. Okay, okay, okay. So, hey, there was this talk about Alfie Black Cat during the uh, Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. And basically their infrastructure was a little dodgy and they're getting it sorted out. It was not law enforcement. 
here's the thing. In reality, guys, you've got to remember, like, criminal businesses are just businesses. Yes, they want favorable terms and they want to set up their IT infrastructure in data centers that are favorable to their, you know, criminal enterprise. And like, they would never, ever, you would be an absolute donkey, okay? You would be, hold on. You are so dumb. You are really dumb, for real. You would be absolutely ridiculously dumb to set up your backend criminal enterprise infrastructure in the United States in AWS or Google Compute or Microsoft Azure. Law enforcement can just get in there, FBI, like it would be it would be so dumb, right? Which is why you don't see it very often. But you need you need that infrastructure. If you go look at how Emotet was set up, if you read um if you read Andy Greenberg's Tracer in the Dark, where he talks about um, Silk Road, the online dark web marketplace and its backend infrastructure, and um, oh my God, what was the other one? Um, Alpha Bay, Alpha Bay, and its backend infrastructure. It's all hosted in professional high end data centers. Now, what I hate is in movies, okay, in movies, the criminals. They always have like a, a dodgy um, warehouse, right? It's on like the seedy part of town. There's huge like bay sliding doors. And then they have like server racks set up and wires running everywhere. And there's like a conference table in the middle of the warehouse and they're hacking. And they got the one nerdy guy who's obviously the nerd because he's wearing glasses. And like, okay, here's the thing. All right. That is not reality. They do it for Hollywood because it looks cool. But dude. Here's the thing, like, where are you buying all that crap and how are you getting it shipped there, right? People see these things coming in. If, you, if you're gonna take it to the next level and have like some secret layer base because you're Spectre from the James Bond franchise, like the secret agent bad guys, the, the assassins, they are not the ones building out infrastructure. So you, what are you gonna do? Like, you're gonna hire an entire construction team and IT engineers, network engineers, all these people, all the people you need to support a large enterprise. And then what are you going to do? Like after they set it up, like eliminate them because they know too much. Like, like it, it kills me. Like, dude, I, and I'm sorry to go off on a tangent here, but like the bat cave, the bat cave is probably the quintessential example of what the hell. Batman, Bruce Wayne and Alfred did not build out the bat cave. Batman is not a computer science expert. He does not understand networking. Batman doesn't, like, you see Batman's lair? He's got, like, the thing the bat car goes on to, and it does a, a 180 to be able to leave. Somebody somewhere had to build that platform. So there's an entire team of construction employees who know exactly where the bat cave is, unless Bruce Wayne killed them all after they built it. And by the way, they go home at night. It's not like you drop in and like, all right, we're going to spend six months building this Batcave. Isn't it weird that Batman doesn't let us go see our families at night? Like the whole concept of it is ridiculous. Like, let's not forget about the engineers, the IT people, the construction staff, all the people that need that infrastructure to work and exist. They are not superheroes or like spies, like you never see those people, right? And when you do, they're, they're like, they're just like tech forward spies. Like, get out of here. By the way, who cleans the Batcave? Alfred? He's got an entire mansion to clean. All right, I'm done. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Percy! Yes, exactly. B Sex saying Batman built the Batcave, but let's come on. Dude, come on. There's no way he built the platform that spins the bad car. You would need like construction equipment, heavy equipment. And I get that he owns a business and he can route like supplies through it, but come on. It's the bat cave. All right. Eddie has a question. Let's actually do some cyber stuff. Eddie has a question. Is it okay to take an IT specialist help desk position to break into the industry while looking for a cyber sock analyst job? Um, so Eddie, uh, the answer is yes. It's totally fine. And it will help you, honestly, because you'll be talking to end users. You'll be seeing common problems. On top of that, wherever you are, you should absolutely tell the information security office at that business that you're interested in helping their mission. And, you know, like, oh, hey, I would, hey, InfoSec person, 
How about this? I work all day, every day, taking phone calls and helping end users. What if I got them set up on MFA every time they called for a password reset? Mm -hmm. Would that help you? Would you like that? Hey, can I join your information security weekly meetings just to kind of eavesdrop and listen? Establish yourself as that person. And then eventually um, when a job opens up, they'll get you. Um, there's no, there's no, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, but I will say that you'll be spending that, you know, eight hours a day working, working. So you'll have to do the, the studying and looking for the job outside of work, which, you know, depending on your amount of time and everything, that's what's up. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Alfred loves to clean. I don't know, Emmanuel. I don't know. I, I feel like Alfred deals, takes up, puts up with a lot of crap. Um, yeah, so Legrad says he's skimming tech off his defense companies. That's fine. Batman can Batman could set up an entire shell company and all it does is build bat caves for other people, right? Like let's just be let's just hit the nail on the head, right? Batman sets up Wayne Enterprises subsidiary called Bat Caves Inc. And any, you know, um, you know, Saudi royal or ultra rich oligarch can have their own bat cave. And, and, you know, he's buying equipment, and, you know, he's buying bat cars, everything, right? And it's all legit. Oh, man, look at this high-end luxury item. I got my own bat cave. At some point, somebody had to build the bat cave. They would have, like, all that material, like, it doesn't raise an eyebrow because they're selling bat caves all over the world. Somewhere, someone had to go into Gotham right under Wayne Manor and build a bat cave. Mm -mm, that should raise eyebrows, okay? All right. Oh, Angular. I didn't even realize that there was a rant in Clerks about the Death Star. But yeah, great point. Great point. All right. Chris Young wants the bat pull. I love it. Uh, <clears throat> I know that there's all sorts. Of, I know we're supposed to be doing jaw. Like, I guess this is jaw jacking. But um, Leon Elliott says, how did I break into cyber? Okay, good question. Gather around. Um, <clears throat> So I went to college for computer science. I came out of uh, college thinking that I needed to be a software developer. I went to the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Great program, great school, wonderful experience. I'm very happy I did it. I actually learned who I was in college. I was a complete jackass. Uh, sorry, Kennedy. I was a really idiot. I, and again, I won't go too deep into the details because you didn't ask about that. But um, <clears throat> I got a job as a software developer. And I, I started doing that and my code got audited for FISMA compliance for security and I failed like horribly. And I take a lot of pride in uh, excellence, <clears throat> excuse me, excellence and quality. And I was pissed that I got a bad grade. I was pissed. I like, you know, like, cause it was like, it was like a ding on me. They're like, oh, that you missed this. You missed this. You don't, your authentication sucks. You're not doing auditing. Um, there's no, like we had backups, but like everything about my thing sucked. And I was like, all right, I need answers to why you're saying I suck. I built my software to spec, two requirements. My code does exactly what it does. I received multiple awards, including one for myself, a Bra Bravo Zulu mug. If you've heard that story last Tuesday, like a silly, a silly Billy, I accidentally gave myself an award, but anyways, I was getting awards for, um, for just destroying work. And I got this huge, huge thing and I was mad. And then I wanted to understand more about it. So I started uh, understanding what FISMA was and what security was. And then I found out that there was like this entire industry. And when I was young, like, you know, between 13 years old and 16 years old, I got into like, I was into computers and BBSs and stuff. And I found out about like hacking and kind of the dark arts, if you will, the Jolly Roger if for some of you who are older and know what the Jolly Roger is. Uh, so I was into that scene, 2600 magazine, but I, I always thought it was like for criminals only. And I was just curious. I wasn't really, I didn't realize it was a field. So when I found out about FISMA and I started getting more information, I had a phone call with an information security professional who worked in the industry, Ray Leister. Um, and he told me at that moment on that phone call that it's an entire industry, very lucrative. It's blowing up. And pen testing is a whole field that's real. You can really do that. And defense and audit and all these other things. And he explained to me where the FISMA auditing piece went into. 
He told me about a vulnerability scanner, which blew my mind that there was a tool. I thought you had to be like elite hacker to be able to find bugs. And in reality, you could just scan a tool, find a bug, exploit it, take over a machine. And I, at that point, I was hooked. I had an insatiable appetite for learning about it. And um, as soon as I could, like as soon as that, as soon as that was done, I immediately, immediately started looking for jobs. And I looked internally. So the company I worked for was called Bearing Point. They don't exist anymore. But it was basically KPMG Consulting. After the Enron fiasco um, and the Arthur Anderson meltdown, um, essentially big four consulting firms split off the auditing piece and the consulting piece in order to have separation of duties. Bearing Point was KPMG's consulting arm. I worked there. Deloitte later acquired them. Um, so, but when you work for a huge professional services company, it's very easy to pivot within it. I found a job as a sysadmin slash Sarbanes Oxley uh, IT auditor, which is aligned with GRC. And I took that job, did sysadmin work for, I think, two years and uh, SOX auditing. And then after that, I went all in. And a really, really funny story, if you guys are interested. Uh, the SOX auditing was fine, but um, I wanted more. Bearing Point was about to go bankrupt uh, and start selling off pieces. And what I ended up doing was uh, I was walking my dog <clears throat> in my town and I walked by an old brick, um, like one of these repurposed old mill factory things. Like, and so this is in New England. If you've been to New England, you know what I'm talking about. Jamie Fleck knows what I'm talking about. But in New England, there's all sorts of like factories, like shoe factories, leather factories, all this other stuff. And it's made of brick. It's like really high end or not high end. It, it persists. But factories are done, right? Like the, the whole idea of like a mill town or a factory town is kind of antiquated. So these buildings have been repurposed for commercial space or, you know, uh, business space. And I walked by one um, and there was a sign out front with the businesses tiny. And there's a sign that said TBG security. I was like, oh, that must be a security company. So I like literally thought about it. I walked by it a couple more times. And then this is this is my story, okay? So I'm already kind of doing GRC work at this point, <clears throat> but I'm scared that this company is gonna go under. And you know, like, I what am I gonna do? So I go into this building, into TBG Security, walk up the stairs, and I knock on the door. Right? They open the door. It's a two-person company. They open the door and they're like, "Yes," and I'm like, "Hi, uh, I'm Jerry." I kind of work in information security. I saw your sign out front. Uh, it's TBG security. Are you guys a security company? Like, like information security and a guy named Dennis Calderoni still friends with him to this day said, yeah. And I said, I, I really want to work in this industry. I kind of, I do socks auditing right now, but I really want to work in this industry. Like, can I just talk to you guys about like what this industry is and, you know, like learn from you. And they're like, yeah, but not right now. Come back like, you know, whatever, Wednesday at noon. And I said, okay. And, you know, that was that was my first assignment, right? Come back Wednesday at noon. If I blew that off, I would have been a joker, right? So I show up Wednesday at noon and they had lunch ready. And they're like, all right, let's sit down. What questions do you got? I'm like, you know, like, what do you do? Like, how is that? Like, what's the different jobs? How could I get in, right? And it's basically, so dudes, this is like 2007, YouTube, Simply Cyber, and like cybersecurity, YouTube didn't exist. All the Telegram channels, all the Discord servers, that none of that existed. There was a lot of toxicity and exclusivity in the industry. Like what I did was like the best thing you could possibly do at the time. Like Udemy, like Coursera, like all like TCM Academy, like none of this existed. Everybody that's taken advantage of all this today, like, like it's the golden age of access to cybersecurity knowledge and content. Um, so anyways, I knock on the door. I talk to them. Uh, we have a great hour-long conversation, et cetera. We exchange information. That's it. Um, you know, maybe a week, a month goes by, and they text me, and they say, hey, we've got a, we've got a six-month gig. Are you interested? And, like, p uh, unbelievable timing. Like, Bearing Point had just announced... Um, that they were getting acquired and they were laying off me. 
And uh, I had got like a severance package or something like that. So I was like in the severance package period. And I got that text message. I'm like frantically applying to jobs I don't really like or want. And I got that text message and I went and I did a six month gig um, doing cybersecurity enterprise risk assessment auditing under the tutelage of a senior person, um, crushed it. Uh, and then just fi final, fi so that's my break-in story. And then final, final fun fact, you guys will love this. The client was Aubon Pan, okay? Aubon Pan is like a bakery. Think of like Panera kind of, but it was a bakery. It's in Boston, Mass. And their corporate, um, uh, their corporate business building or whatever, like where IT sits, where HR sits, where the business execs sit, is on the second floor of a factory. The first floor is where they produce all the pastries, all the bread, everything. And then they, you know, they bake it all morning at like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and then they distribute it out into Boston. But one of the things was they had a uh, table right when you walk into the lobby of the business full of fresh pastries, like fresh, fresh pastries. And it was like free for whatever, like help yourself, get crazy. And I would take the train in every morning, the commuter rail, and I would get there about 7.30 in the morning. By the way, it was brutal. Uh, I would have to get up at like five in the morning. It sucked. But anyways, I did it. So I take the commuter rail in. And then for a period of time, like three months, I would basically eat two cheese danishes every morning. And I literally, I know it probably seems hard to believe, but like I was, I was at peak Jerry. I was the heaviest I'd ever been. So much in fact, that one of my closest friends came to visit me. He hadn't seen me in like a year. He came to visit me and he stayed with me. And um, like, as soon as he sees me, like hugs me, he's like, damn, Jerry. He's like, what have you been doing? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you're heavy. And I'm like, I've been eating two cheese danishes every day consistently for like three months. He's like, okay. He's like, ah. And so like after that in interaction, I literally stopped eating the Danishes right afterwards and, uh, you know, and like went back down, like the, the tide went back out into the ocean or the, 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 the flow, the, the wave ebbed back in. But for a minute there, I was peak, peak Jerry. Anyways, thank you very much for listening to that story. I haven't told that story in a long time, but that's my story. All right, here we go. AJ Sorrento, Sec Plus exam scheduled for Friday. Second interview with a company strictly on cyber on Wednesday. Damn! EJ Sorrento, my man, crush the Sec Plus exam. I'm super pumped for you. Nothing's going to be better than going into that second interview talking about how you're super excited, how you crushed that in, uh, exam, and now you're certified. Um, <clears throat> I, I wish you the very best, and I hope. Uh, I, I look forward to you, uh, sharing the good news, uh, bo on both fronts. Alana Boyajian. Yes, I was doughy. I like the uh, play on words there too, Alana. Oh, thanks Leon Elliott for asking the question. Dirty bulk, Jerry. Yeah. You know what I did to those, uh, cheese danishes? <laughs> Gotta eat them. Gotta eat them. I will tell you to this day, I have a soft spot for apple fritters, <laughs> Do not give me an apple fritter. I have zero self-control over apple fritters. I will, I'll eat apple fritters like, um, like, I, I don't know what, what a good example is, but like, basically like, like you could lose a finger if you get, if you get it stuck in there near an apple fritter in my mouth. Have a great day, Brent. Be well. Important question from Chris Young. When is Simply Cyber Headquarters getting a bat pool instead? Install. <laughs> Oh my God. That's funny. Thanks. We just become best friends. Yep. Thanks for the super chat, uh, Chris. Uh, and thanks for the squad membership. Um, a bad pull. This is a one floor studio. A bad pull would be, uh, kind of bananas. Uh, I would just go drilling into the ground, but you know what I do like? I do like, um, if there was like a slide coming out of the second floor of my house into the studio, that would be kind of fun. But one thing at a time, I got to find contractors I can trust. Um, <laughs> Uh, C Reigns. Oh, this is a fun, I guess we're doing story time today. C Reigns asks, how did I end up in Charleston? Guys, you'll love this story. I hope so. So check it out. I live in Charleston. If you don't know, Charleston is an absolute gorgeous, beautiful city, great restaurants, lots of cool breweries, lots of stuff to check out, history, people, tourism, 
Um, great community. It's nice. Here is the reality, okay? You guys, believe it or not, this is how I ended up here. The year is 2009. I live with my uh, my my wife. Uh, she was my uh, girlfriend and then fiance at this period of time. We're, we are engaged. It is April 1st, 2009, okay? There is a massive blizzard. You can go back and look it up. There's a massive blizzard, okay? It's April and there's a massive blizzard. I am done with winter. Nadine and I, my wife and I lived in probably like, I don't know, an 800 square foot, two floor converted barn into like a really kind of like trendy apartment. And it was cool, but like we had been locked in there basically for like four or five months, six months, right? Like it was a long winter. New England in winter, you basically hunker down and spend a lot of time inside. We were stir crazy cabin fever. Um, March had come, like snow is gone. We were doing a little bit of stuff outside. And then April 1st comes, April Fool's Day. And it freaking blizzarded. I get up at 5 a.m. I, I still worked at Bearing Point at this point. So I had to put on a monkey suit, which is basically a suit and tie. And I get up 5 a.m. I'm wearing like basically what I'm wearing now. I snow plow or snow blow. I didn't have a plow. I had snow blower. I snow blow my driveway. And we had like one of those driveways that's like the main driveway. And then you pull off into like a dirt part for where your cars park. I snow plow or snow blow my car out in my driveway, which takes like an hour. Not what I want to do at five in the morning. By the way, it's freaking freezing out. It sucks. Um, and I come inside. Nadine is up. Nadine has made me coffee, which I totally love. Nadine has made me a bite to eat, which I totally love. I eat the I eat the food. I drink the coffee. It's like maybe 6.15, 6.30. I think I have to be to work at 7.30. I grab a shower. I get into my monkey suit, my, my, my business costume or whatever. And I kiss Nadine. I say, I'll see her later. It's about 7 a.m. I'm going to drive to work. Ugh. I open the door to the outside and it looked like I hadn't done anything. It had continued snowing at such a rate that it had filled up my driveway in my car. I slammed the door. I said, this, we're leaving. We had talked about it for years. Like I always wanted to move to the South. And that was part of like the discussion with Nadine about like life plans. And, you know, do you want these life plans? Because if not, we need to, we need to, you know, you know, maybe we're not, we love each other, but maybe we're not a good fit because I want to move to the South. She was like, yeah, you know, I love, I love good weather. I said, I hate snow. I hate snow. And this is the straw that broke my back. This is ridiculous. I slammed the door. I said, we're moving. We are moving. That is it. I'm done. What do you want? You get, you get one absolute, absolute must have. And I get one absolute must have. My must have is it does not snow. What is yours? Nadine said, I want to live near the beach. Okay, easy. Now, obviously we wanted to stay in the Eastern time zone. So when we had kids, it'd be in the same time zone as my family and her family and in-laws and you know visiting and stuff like that. So I, we literally got out a US map. I drew my finger down the coast because it needs to be near a beach and it needs not snow. North Carolina is where it starts, okay? Scrolling down, Wilmington's the first city that we find, Wilmington, North Carolina. I spend two weeks, this is probably like mid-April, I spend two weeks looking for a job in Wilmington, North Carolina. Not a lot of business there. I don't find a job. Next, scrolling down, we're just going to skip Myrtle Beach because that's ridiculous. I don't want to live in Myrtle Beach. Okay, the next city on the map is Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, I've never been there. She's never been there. We don't know anyone who's been there. I had a, I had a friend in college who like did a semester at college at Charleston, said it was cool, whatever. So I spend two weeks looking for a job. Spay War Charleston is there. Spay War Charleston has a huge information security capability there. Uh, after one week, I get a job interview. Three days later, I get a job offer. I, I set the start date for like, uh, I think October 1st, right? Like, because we had to get things sorted out. And I say, we're moving to Charleston. I move in October, start my job, get an apartment. Um, I slept on a couch for a few weeks. Then I get an apartment. I get situated. I confirm I like the job, prep everything. Nadine comes down in December 
And that's it. Never been here before. Never knew anyone that was here. Boom, we're in. And that's how we moved to Charleston. Never looked back. We built a house like in June uh, of 2010. And uh, that's what's up. All right, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed story time. Thank you for the questions. Um, I, I appreciate it. I hope I helped a couple of you with uh, cyber stuff. The stories weren't really cyber related today. And um, oh, it seems like my stories, my stories in the CISO series stories weren't super cyber related, but hopefully you guys got value. Hopefully you had some fun. Jarrett Wright. Welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. All right, guys. Thank you all so very much. You guys are wonderful. Thank you for allowing me and Simply Cyber to be part of your day. And thank you for sharing your day with me. Be well, everybody. I got a 930. I got a boogie too. Sid Patton, Kayla Sturgeon, great to see you guys. Go out, everybody, and check. Um... Oh, my God. I don't want to say. Um... I was trying to find who had the squad. Oh, Chelsea Ray Waterhouse. Uh, go out and grab Chelsea Ray Waterhouse's um, Simply Cyber Community Challenge post. Be good, everybody. Thanks so much. And until tomorrow morning with the guest host, stay secure. Well, oh, hold on. Kayla Sturgeon coming in hot with the super chat right at the end. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Kayla, thanks so much for the super chat. Thanks for the longtime squad membership. I see that blue badge you know, on you. Looks good on you. And uh, thanks for showing up every day, Kayla, being part of the community, supporting everybody. And um, just, yeah, genuinely appreciate you. Thank you. All right, guys. Be well. I'll see you next time. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed that content. Keep the cybersecurity train going by connecting with the other Simply Cyber community resources. We have the Discord server that's lively and always keeps the conversation going. You can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. And also every single weekday morning on the Simply Cyber channel, we're doing live daily cyber threat briefings, 8 a.m. Eastern time, as well as Thursday at 4.30 p.m. We're doing live stream interviews with industry experts, and we produce videos that we push out every Wednesday morning. I'm Jerry from Simply 